What? Don't you understand? We should be thanking your wife, Ashley. Oh, yeah, of course. Thank you. Because it was she who braved the savage streets to bring us this feast. Otherwise, our hunger would have taken us to the Ice Age, where it is, you know, Night of the Living Dead. What's the matter, Mad Max? Stand by me, bro, or you'll be catching fire. But hey, don't worry, I'll bring you some milk. If you're not a killjoy, too. And I will always be your single white female. I'm just going to say thank you. Do you like fun and adventure? Then sit back and enjoy the Brothers Not Lovers as they discuss all things movies. What's overrated or underrated? What makes you go really? Or how dare you? Or even just simply how funny this movie can be. You have the insightful, intuitive, Davey, who is awesome. And you have the film bestie, Josh. He's there. Hi, I'm Dick, and I'm... You okay, man? What's, what's going on? Why are you wearing Rubber Ashley's shirt? I think it's over. Pretty sure she's having an affair. Okay, I'll bite. Why do you think that? She's been distant, man. She's so secretive. She keeps her cell phone close to her chest. She won't let me see nothing. She won't talk to me. She spent all night next door last night. And when I tried to talk to her about it, she just threw Harold back in my face and then hissed herself flat. She would rather go, go all raggy then talk to me. Well, there, there. Cheer up. There's plenty of fish at the adult bookstore you got her. You think so? Sure. You could buy another one exactly like her. Yeah. Women. Who needs some right? Sure. You look like you can use a cold one. You know what I could, yeah. <sighs> I'm Davey. I'm awesome. And this is Josh, the film bestie. Or as I like to call myself, the heartbroken. The heraldless. Everybody's heraldless. Everybody cries. <laughs> and remember Ashley. Give me a minute, man. Call commit. And this is How Dare You. Where we take movies that have been incessantly bashed throughout the years and we defend them. And this particular episode of How Dare You. We're going to be focusing on great movies that have been bashed and ridiculed and didn't get the play they deserved by one particular actor. Amber Heard. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> 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 mm. The actor, though, we're talking about, kind of in the same vein. No, the great, wonderful actor who's brought us Timeless classics, like Captain Jack Sparrow, like the Sweeney Todd, the Demon Barber, Fleet Street. Johnny, Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. Mm. Yeah, your wife loves him. She does. She wants a little sparrow, not swallow. She's not the only one. <laughs> And I gotta say, I think me wanting to sleep with Johnny Depp does not make me gay. I think I'd be more gay if I didn't want to sleep with Johnny Depp. Yeah, duh. He, he's a beautiful, beautiful man. But no, in all seriousness, Johnny Depp is one of the best actors to ever grace the silver screen. Sure, he overdoes it, but he does it in such a way, with such flair! 
He's got the charisma. He decided to play Ichabod Crane as a schoolgirl. It was. That's really what he said. That was what he portrayed him as, was a schoolgirl. <laughs> yeah. And it worked perfectly. Here's the thing, though. Mentioning Ichabod Crane, Sleepy Hollow was the first movie he ever made that he made a profit while in theaters. And that is sad. He made so many great movies before that. Oh, yeah. And we're going to take a few of them that before that, and even since that, should have done better. Like Cry Baby. You know... I hate to admit it, but I've never actually seen Crybaby. Doesn't make sense that I haven't seen it. It has Johnny Depp. It was directed by John Waters. It's Look. got Tracy Lords. That I don't care about. But it's got two, a director I love and an actor I love. I, sh I, I promise before this airs, I will have seen Crybaby. Tracy Lords would have been better to him than Amber Heard was. Fair enough. I bet she wouldn't have taken a dump in the bed. She wouldn't have hired her lawyers off Sesame Street. So, the first movie, we're gonna say... How dare you? Two. Was... One, I will admit, was not Johnny Depp's best movie. He didn't actually need to be in it. They could have gotten anybody else. But still a great movie that should have done better. Davey, for the last time, he was not in Cabin Boy. That would have been awesome. But, yeah, it would have. But no. I'm talking about Nick of Time. Oh, uh, yeah. I remember the first time I ever saw that movie. And I went to my brother and I'm like, dude, you gotta see this movie. And I went and saw it in the Nick of Time. And I will admit, it wasn't, at the time, we were pretty young. It wasn't so much Johnny Depp that brought us into it. We no. were big marks for Christopher Walken. Still am. Oh, yeah. And I will admit, he was the one that made that movie. Oh, yeah. As that creepy villain, but... Johnny, let's make a movie together. And Johnny's like, okay. Johnny, this movie, I'm going to be the bad guy. And you're going to be trying to get in there and save your daughter. While at the same time, you're trying not to assassinate somebody that I'm making you assassinate. Because I kidnapped your daughter, Johnny. You got to get to your daughter, Johnny. This movie, it was basically that premise. They found a random guy with his daughter, abducted his daughter to force him to assassinate a congresswoman. And he's, throughout the entire movie, which, that was another cool thing of the movie. The movie was shot in real time. Oh, yeah. Like, it's a 90-minute movie, but it's like, it's not two hours later, three hours later, like most movies do. It's, you're watching 90 minutes of his life as he's trying to find a way to not kill the woman, but at the same time save his daughter. Oh. And it's... Fantastic. I object, Your Honor! To yourself? Yes, but I would like to rephrase what I just said. Do we have any other films on this list? Hearsay. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. She had some crappy lawyers. <laughs> she did. Lawyers crappier than her sheets. So therefore, those of you who didn't give a chance to a great movie like Nick of Time, a movie that could have catapulted his career but sadly didn't, no, what catapulted that career was the mega pint. Were you there? That's seriously. But seriously, those of you who didn't give Nick a time, the proper respect. How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> For our next. How dare you? This one came out after Sleepy Hollow. Probably the best Jack the Ripper movie I've ever seen. Yes. Which is not saying much because I will say this, most Jack the Ripper movies suck and miss the point. But yeah. if there was ever one that didn't miss the point, it was from hell. It kind of missed the point, but yeah. Uh, it, it raised the argument of who they felt Jack the Ripper was, which is a okay, common just, argument, but yeah. Let's just talk about the star of this movie, Heather Graham. Mm. Mm. Uh, the star of this movie was Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp was in this? Man, you take forever to realize things. Yes, Johnny Depp playing the detective, a very troubled detective, trying to figure out who Jack the Ripper is in a time where they didn't have forensic evidence or anything like that. I was too busy looking at Heather Graham's cleavage the whole time. I didn't even know it was him. Dang, that's awesome! Guess that's why we call you Awesome Dave, huh? From hell! It was a great movie where 
they were basically doing the argument of the physician that worked for the royal family was Jack the Ripper, which some people believe, some people don't. And Hagrid was in this. And so was Bilbo Baggins. Did you watch this movie? I did, but I kept looking at the women. The only attractive one was Heather Graham, and in real life, she, Mary Kelly was not attractive. Davey. What? Attraction is in the eye of the beholder. I saw a lot of cleavage in this. But I did like that this was one of the times that they did a Jack the Ripper movie that was very much focusing on Jack the Ripper, the killings, and everything going on. Most Jack the Ripper movies, it always seems like they focus on somebody who lived in the area or something, and that's yeah. just kind of stupid. But I do have a theory. What's your theory? H.H. H. Holmes was either Jack the Ripper or he befriended Jack the Ripper and pushed him to do it. Because he was at the Whitechapel District at that time. Okay. Not here to argue about who Jack the Ripper is. But All I know is when I watched this movie, when I wasn't paying attention to the girls, I was trying to imitate the detective with, you know, the absinthe and morphine. That explains why you didn't know Johnny Depp was in the movie. Johnny but Depp was in this? For crying out loud. <laughs> Yes, Johnny Depp was in it, and it was an awesome movie. That didn't do very well at all, even though it should have. Damn, that's it, awesome. It was an on-the-edge-of-your-seat thriller movie about a real-life serial killer. And that's why we call you Awesome Davey. How dare you? How dare you? For the next... How dare you? Johnny Depp movies. A movie where Johnny Depp portrayed one of my favorite directors of all time. The movie, Ed Wood. Is that the one with the jar of dirt? That was Pirates of the Caribbean. Ed remember Wood. that scene? Yeah, I remember that scene. It was awesome. Yeah. No, Ed Wood was the movie about Ed Wood. Edward D. Wood Jr. Someone that has been regarded as the worst director of all time. To that, I would say you've never seen Mono's Hands of Fate. Definitely not a good director, I will give you that. His movies were crap. I love them. Oh, yeah. But it was a great portrayal, especially because nobody knows much about Ed Wood. He wasn't famous, so everything we know is kind of hearsay. Just stuff that his friends and family have told us about Ed Wood. That's hearsay. Yes, it is. They wrote a script as best they could about his life wasn't entirely accurate, but then again, it is a biopic and they never are. Immediately, Johnny Depp sees the script and thinks, used car salesman, and portrays him that way. Which is one of the things I like about Johnny Depp, how he can just read a character and think, effeminate girl, used car salesman, butt rocker instead of a pirate. And he just creates a character all his own. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. In this case, it did because a lot of people who knew Ed Wood said, whereas he didn't get the voice right, Ed Wood was very much a used car salesman. But tell me, at mm. the end of this movie, when it was over and you left, what happened then? I wasn't there when I left. Oh. Yeah, we're not going to give up on those jokes. No. no. <laughs> and it wasn't just Donnie Depp that made this movie good. Bella Lugosi being portrayed by Martin Landau, one of the greatest actors of all Press time. Rest in peace, Martin. It, it was great. One of the greatest actors of all time. Portraying one of the greatest actors of all time. I've had the biggest crush on his daughter, Juliet, forever. She is... She is Jim. She was in this movie, too. Yeah. She played the Red King. The star of such wonderful films as Bride of the Monster. And then I'm sure she did something else. One of the stupidest criticisms I heard about this movie was people so thrown off that they decided to shoot it in black and white. So what? It made sense. Pretty much all of Ed Wood's films weren't black and white. Until later when they could put color in them. It was a great movie. Had a great cast. Told a great story. About maybe not a great director, but a creative one. Let's just put it that way. Can you believe people bash this movie so much? It just doesn't make any sense to me. How dare you? How dare you? Why? Why you have them? Where do you even get all those voices? From hell. For the last 
movie that we're going to say, How dare you? For Johnny Depp. Although there probably will be more Johnny Depp movies we do that for in the future, because he's made a lot of great movies that didn't get the play they deserve. But this is one that honestly surprises me and shocks a lot of people to find this out, because one of his most popular roles ever, one of his most iconic films, has the huge, huge cult following. From hell? No. Did you know he was in that? This huge, huge movie nowadays that actually did very poorly when it first came out. Edward Scissorhands. Starring Winona Ryder. Mm. Also had Anthony Michael Hall. Mm. Don't judge me, David. Josh, I could not possibly judge you any more than I already do. Good. A lot of people hail this movie as being a great movie, and it is a great movie. But it didn't do well when it first came out. This movie did not make money until a couple of years after it came out. It, it tanked, it got bad reviews, people said it was stupid. And I think that was unfair. It wasn't stupid. Okay, it was creative. It was weird, and it was definitely made you go, like, why would a guy make the last thing he's going to do when he's building a mechanical boy to change his hands? But, hey, if anybody would have done that, I believe Vincent Price would have. Oh, yeah. But it was a story of some people that just can't gain acceptance within society. Which, some people feel that way. Namely, an awesome movie reviewer like myself. But Johnny Depp. To me, this was his first really shining moment on cinema. For me, it was Nightmare on Elm Street. Really? Even he thinks he sucked in that movie. He did, but it was a shining moment when the blood came flowing out. That was probably one of the best kills in the series. But, but no, this movie was a fantastic, very creative story that not only launched his career, but launched the career of guys like, like Tim Burton, who sure had had some success doing Beetlejuice and Pee-wee's Big Adventure, but this was the one that really made him a star. Well, that and Batman. To find out that this movie that is so iconic now that you guys couldn't give it the play it deserved when it first came out, that angers me. CSA old sport. We're still doing that? Mm-hmm. But seriously, why couldn't you guys just enjoy a movie about a guy trying to make a way for himself in society even though his hands are made of scissors? And for that matter, why couldn't anybody just think to dull the scissors? Was it this movie or Beetlejuice that got you started on your Winona Ryder fetish? It's not a fetish. It's just the first time I saw her in Beetlejuice, I was like, taken away. I like goth girls, okay? I like girls that are different. She was hot in the Heathers. Yeah, she was. Heathers was the early 90s, Karen. Those of you who couldn't love an iconic movie like Edward Scissorhands when it first came out, how dare you? And how dare you, Johnny? What? I had to wait several years after this film came out, when I saw What's Eating Gilbert Grape, to realize that the, that the scissors were not even real. That he had real hands. That he was a real boy. Where are the scissors, Johnny? Okay... So apparently there were two people in this world that thought his hands were really made of scissors. Hopefully you've learned something in this video. To appreciate movies that are great when they come out. To appreciate a true master of his craft. We also learned that Amber Heard is never going to live down crapping in a bed. Ha! <laughs> Beers! To the makers of Cards Against Humanity. Give us Cards Against the Amber Heard Trial. I would buy the crap out of that deck! I would buy them all! Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure to hit like, hit subscribe, hit the little bell so you get notifications when I post new videos, and leave a comment. Tell us if you agree with us, tell us if you disagree, tell us if you want cards against Amber. Uh, yeah. Love you guys.